In the lab this week, I set an exercise um, of creating a generic polygon class where we'd already implemented the VEC3 class and you had to create the polygon class with the ability to um, allocate on construction the amount of vertices that were required, then be able to set those individual vertices as a series of VEC3 and also calculate the center of the uh, polygon by traversing through all of the vertices and calculating the average. So here's that um, expressed as a UML class diagram. Um, for brevity, I've um, only put in the attributes of the VEC3 class. And the polygon class, I'm going to have an attribute called nverts, which is going to be the number of vertices. And here I've got one called M vertices, which I've declared as a um, pointer to a VEC3. And you can see here the important part is that I've also indicated the relationship between the polygon class and the VEC3 class, which is going to be a one to many relationship. So if we turn and look at the code, here's the basic outline of the VEC3 class that we generated in the lecture. So I've included iOS forward so that we can declare certain elements of the um, host stream. And then I've created a constructor uh, where I pass in x, y, and z, and then this is passed to a parameter list for the x, y, and z attributes, and there's no other code involved in this. Next, I've created a copy constructor, which again has a parameter list, and we set the individual elements. It's important to note that the copy constructor is passing in a constant reference to another VEC3. Therefore, we cannot modify the VEC3 that's passed in because it's read-only. Next, we've got the destructor which is doing nothing in this case. There's no dynamic memory allocation, so we don't really need to do anything. And then I've implemented some inline methods as accessors. So these ones here, x, y, and z, will return the correct attribute for each one. Notice they mark const because these do not mutate the class, so we're being const correct. And I've also implemented some mutators where we pass in a value for x and that will get assigned. Obviously these do mutate the class so they can't be marked as const. And we've also implemented the stream um, extraction operator so that we can um, print out um, the results of this vec3. And if we look in here you can see that that's just implemented to print out using brackets. So the next part is to generate our, our generic polygon class. So the constructor is being passed in an integer inverts, which I've defaulted to three because the minimum polygon we can have is a triangle, a destructor, and then the method setVertex, which is how we're going to set the um, vertex values. So I'm passing in int i, which is an index, and a reference, again, a const reference to the vec3. Now this is a const reference because we want to pass by um, value this, um, sorry, pass by reference this vec3 so that we don't have to make a temporary copy when we're passing it through. So this is, is for speed. So we pass the reference, we're basically just passing the memory address of where that object lives. However, we want it const because we want to ensure that this isn't mutated. Again, we've got an extraction operator just to make it easier to print out the data for debugging. And then the core data elements here, I've got a pointer to the um, vertices of the polygon. Um, which is of type VEC3, and I'm storing the number of vertices that are stored as well. Also notice I've hash included the 
uh, VEC3.h here so that um, this class is aware of it. So our constructor is going to be relatively easy. Um, so we have polygon, so part of the polygon class, scope loop resolution operator, and polygon again. We're passing in inverts. We copy inverts here, and then we're saying m vertices equals new vec3 m inverts. So what I'm doing is I'm constructing an array of vec3s. Now, if I compile this now, we'll see that we actually get an error in our code, which says no matching constructor for initialization of VEC3. Now, this is because, if we go back to VEC3, at the moment we're trying to construct our class um, using new into an array, and it's looking for a default constructor. Now, at the moment, we haven't got a default constructor. So, there are two ways around this, and both have merits. We could do vec, um, our own new VEC3 class. So, we could say VEC3, open close brackets, uh, like that. That has now generated a default constructor. That will be the constructor that's used when the line of code... Um, in polygon new vec3 is called and as you can see that actually doesn't do anything we've not implemented any code now sometimes we don't really want to generate our own um, default constructors and in fact sometimes we should try and avoid um, generating too many default constructors so one way around this issue and there is another way which I will uh, do another video on at a later date, is to actually set some default parameters for this constructor. So if I just put in some default values, um, really we should um, default into float as well, so there's no conversion from double, um, like that, and save. If I rebuild now, you'll see that that error message is gone and everything else is working fine. Next in the Polygon class, I have my destructor. So my destructor is going through. It's checking to make sure that I don't have a null pointer um, for my M vertices. So just making sure that that has been assigned, which it should have been in the constructor anyway. But it helps to just make sure. And then I'm saying delete the array, I can close square brackets, very important, that is contained by M vertices. Next, my set vertex method, which is being passed in I and the VEC3. First thing I do is I assert that the index I is between 0 and M verts, so that I am setting the correct vertex which in this case I can then go through and assign the value. My extraction operator literally runs through and prints out each of the vertices elements. And then finally my center method is going to go through and calculate the, um, the center by summing the vertices and um, then dividing it by the number of verts. Now, as you can see, this is one of the problems we have when we use accessors and have data um, private in another class, that first I'm creating a VEC3 called C, which I'm assigning to 0, 0, 0. I'm looping from I equals 0 to the number of verts. And this is actually not particularly nice looking code. What this is saying is set C dot x with the values of the current vertex in the list is x value plus whatever C dot x's value is at present. So this is this is effectively saying um, C plus equal C sorry C dot m x plus equals 
m vertices i dot m x. Now, obviously, we can't do that because these attributes are private, so we can't access them. So we're having to use the accesses and the mutators to do this bit of code. Um, we will learn later in the year how to use operator overloading in various ways to make this code a lot more readable. And in fact, eventually, we will be able to do something along the lines of C plus equals M vertices I like that. And now the same is true for this element. We're basically setting c dot x is um, x value to be whatever it is divided by the number of vertices. So we're just doing a division. Later in the year we should be able to do c slash equals m m verts by implementing our own overloaded operators. Um, the final thing, in main, I'm creating a VEC3 called V1, which I'm just printing out. That was my initial test to test the V1. I'm also creating a polygon P. I'm then saying P.setVertex at 0, 1, and 2, and I'm passing in different vertex values. I'm calling to print that out, and then I'm printing out the center. If I run this, you will now see that I'm getting the three values and I'm getting my calculation for the center, which is pretty much close to zero, as you would expect, because I've got quite a lot of zeros there. So that's the basic example now. Hopefully you should have got to this stage by the end of the lab. The next example I'm going to do is going to um, dynamically expand this, so I'm going to create a new method called add vertex, and then next week we will extend this to use a std vector and do other examples. But that's it for now.